All right. Welcome, everyone, to Old Elk's second game night. Just give a moment for uh, people to start joining us here. So I'm Melinda Maddox, National Mixologist with Old Elk Distilleries. I'm excited to be here today with our master distiller, Greg Metz, Hello. Mr. Uh, Todd Pereira, and Nate Hello. Erner. Hello. With uh, Whiskey Dudes with Attitudes. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Oh, yeah. So, uh, first off, just want to say thank you from uh, Old Elk, from all of us over here, for joining, for tuning in. Um, obviously, this is a stressful time for a lot of people, but also, uh, you know, a good time to be finding other avenues of reaching out and getting to know our neighbors and just, uh, you know, helping each other. So, um, thank you to our first responders out there, um, you know. We appreciate what you guys are doing so much so that we've actually um, shifted gears over at the distillery and we're making sanitizer for some of our local first responders. So um, thank you to you guys and thank you to our distillery team for making that happen. Cheers to that. Here you go. Cheers to that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Cheers. We'll toast here for our... <laughs> By the camera. Our friends keeping us going. Indeed. So uh, with, the, with our game plan today, we want to just go over a few little... Uh, Few little rules uh, for tonight's game. We're going to be uh, joined by uh, both Todd Pereira and Nate Herder and Mr. Greg Metz. So uh, typical to uh, in the game show fashion, let's get to know these guys a little bit better. So, uh, Mr. Mr. Todd Pereira, I've heard yes. that you love rye. That you met Greg for the first time uh, at a whiskey tasting here in Fort Collins at our tasting room. And yep. uh, interestingly enough, you have no middle name. Uh, your parents must have true statement. Must have had a special behind that. <laughs> Very true. Yeah, my son is the first Pereira male with a middle name. And was that a, a, a decision to rebel against uh, your lineage? <laughs> I don't think it was. <laughs> okay. It just sounded good. Nice. <laughs> Something Pereira is kind of hard to match, so we gave him a middle name. <laughs> well, cheers to that. Yes. Yeah. And we have well uh, Nate joining us as well. Like, so uh, Nate has a baby on the way. Congratulations, Nate. Yeah, wow, fabulous. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Very yeah. nice. When's your due date? September 21st. Awesome. Congratulations. Yeah. Great month. Thank you. Thank you. Crazy, crazy time, but also I'm sure, you know, yeah. a good time to be, you know. Yep. Very they're gonna exciting. Be, they're going to be learning all kinds of new things about our world along <laughs> yep. with us. Yeah. I also heard you uh, you love BMWs, so that's probably gonna have to change with the baby yeah. on the way, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> the uh, caravan's uh, coming. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Plenty of room for uh, car seat in the uh, in the back of the three series. That's so. true. That's true. They have the family. <laughs> <right now. laughs> that's right. Make a van. I also mm. hear uh, Nate that you're so obsessed with spreadsheets that you probably made one tonight. That's uh, kind of yeah, actually. Um, my life lives or my life revolves around Excel um, in many ways, uh, shapes and fashions. So, yep. Uh, Good I'm always in the, in the spreadsheets. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. And then last but not least, we have uh, Mr. Greg Metz, our master mm -hmm. distiller. And uh, Greg is uh, very well known for spoiling his dogs, but also his wife, mm -hmm. Susie. And, uh, uh she says that he's a little bit of a curmudgeon, but also her best. <laughs> and uh, in case you didn't know, Greg does consider himself a gearhead, loves muscle cars. So that's something in common there, guys. All right. Yep. We should have put a we should have put a car category in there. <laughs> there you go. Should have. So that's for those of you who are joining along, we'd love to have um, this be as interactive as possible. Obviously, we can see each other, you can see us, um, but the way for our followers and people who are uh, tuning in is to comment with the answers. So uh, kind of like Jeopardy, what we're gonna do is we'll have uh, five categories with uh, four sections. Uh, we'll read off the questions. We'll give a, a moment to give you all time to put your comments in and what you think is the, is the right answer. Jeopardy rules, uh, state that you have to answer your question with what is. So please remember to use that terminology when you're joining us. And then we do have some prizes for our uh, for our 
our friends following. So first prize for the $100 category. So each $100 answer, the first person to answer correctly, we have some old elk swag in the form of a t-shirt for you. And then in the $200 category, we have our awesome ice molds. So these, these are really cool because they actually make a round ice cube. And inside is the shape of a mountain with, uh, with old elk's logo in there yeah, as well. Cool. And then for our third, uh, for the $300 category, so the first person to answer correctly for each of the $300 categories, you get a $15 gift certificate to our online merch store. Lots of cool things on there, including t-shirts and ice ball molds. And then in the $400 category, we will be giving away a free elk head pour. So I know how much everybody covets these. Uh, oh, so yeah. be tuning in and you want to you wanna answer those $400 categories correctly. <laughs> All right. Any questions, guys? Nope. Nope. Ready to roll. All right. Yep, so do. we want to do a little, uh, see who goes first, right? Wouldn't be fair. Yep. You know, Greg's Greg's top dog, but we can't let him have uh, first, <laughs> first tip unless it's fair. So I'm going to pull somebody's name out of here. Somebody's calling you a curmudgeon, Greg. <laughs> Oh, oh you know, Greg. Greg. Hey, Greg. How about that? <laughs> All right. What a surprise. Who the thought? <laughs> <laughs> it's not we're we're not rigging this, I swear. Um okay, so do you guys have uh, some form of a buzzer? All right, yep. Let's let's there you go. Nate, is that a is that a, a, a glass tap? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Todd, what do you got for your uh buzz in? Buzzinga. <laughs> nice. <laughs> And Greg? I've got my drink please bell. Perfect. All right. I love it. Susie's okay. drink please bell. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to start with uh, Greg. We'll get to choose the first category. And uh, whoever uh, has the correct answer and buzzes in first will be called on. Um, again, if you can just uh, let us get the answers out there first so, or the questions out there first so that people following can also play along. Uh, so moving on into our categories tonight, we have doo, 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 important dates followed by cocktails. They're probably going to be whiskey cocktails, just a hint. Let's hope. Uh, whiskey miscellaneous. American whiskey. Ooh, in Colorado. Right. That's where Todd, Nate, I feel like you guys will have an edge there. Let's hope so. I hope so too. We'll find out. <laughs> All right, Greg, what would you like to go with for the first category, please? All right, we're going to check these guys out right out of the box. We're going to go Colorado for 200. Calling us out. Right. So Old Elk Distillery was founded and is based in this Colorado town. Bazinga. Nice. Todd? Fort Collins, Colorado. Ding, ding, ding. That is correct. Mm -hmm. What What is Fort Collins, Colorado? Okay. All right. You you take like this is the first one. You take it's like three points. Out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Todd. That means you get to pick our uh, next category, please. All right. Well, let's go with a T-shirt 100 for Colorado. Okay. True or false? Colorado is the only state to have turned down the Olympics. Bazinga. False. Nate, please. Oh, Nate first. Oh, sorry, no, Todd, sorry. Oh. Yeah, that was Todd. False. Do we have anybody? Ah. Uh, uh, freebie. I think we should, so I think we should, if you don't get it right, I think somebody else should have a chance to answer, right? Yep. Shane yep. got it. And Shane Bromley, you got it. Winner. It is that is true. Funny oh, enough, yeah. right? Because I believe the coalition for uh, the Olympics is here in Colorado, but I was the only state to ever have turned them down. Well, I know Shane, so don't give him too much credit. He had a fifty zero chance. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Um, so you know what? Shane, you're following along in the comments. Will you pick the next category in question for us, please? Pick something good, Shane, or it's going to be a long day for you tomorrow, buddy. Todd, were you just throwing shade, or was that you, Nate, throwing shade? 
What? Just throwing some shade there. Oh yeah. <laughs> on chain. Shade on chain. Yes. Shane, I'm a, are you following along? Yes, all right. Okay. So we've got uh, Shane is choosing whiskey miscellaneous for 200, please. A whiskey that has not been diluted after leaving the barrel is called this. Oh. Greg, please. What is cast strength or barrel strength? That is correct. Ding, ding, ding. Nice. All right, Greg with the win for this. Well, now, let's see. Let's do uh, important dates for 200. All right. The Bottled and Bond Act was signed into effect in this year. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's, it's actually a tough uh, one. I love, love that Todd's looking around at his bottles to see if he has the bottled and bond. Is that cheating? I'm going <laughs> to take a stab. I'll take a stab at this one. Okay. Uh, uh, what is 1886? You're very close. Wow. Anybody else want to give it a stab? How about those following along? So the Bottled and Bond Act was signed into effect in this year. Uh, the Bottled and Bond Act was basically an act that allowed the government to tax whiskey. Um, and I think it went to funk for quite a bit of time. And then only most recently was there still one distillery that was actually doing it. But um, many, many distilleries are actually getting in on the action as well. Because um, technically you could have anything that's bottled and bonded. It doesn't have, doesn't have to necessarily be whiskey. So I know oh, even some, like rum distilleries. Taking a stab. Oh. All right. Todd, you want to go? Uh, 1792. We are going to go to our audience followers. Uh. And uh, Christina Stover is correct with what is 1796. Ooh, nice. And the answer so, is? Christina, that means that you get to, uh, you get to choose <laughs> our next category. <laughs> we'll give you a moment to catch up with us. I think there's a little bit of a delay in our studio session here. It's only off by four years. You were close. I mean... So Christina's playing along with us here. If she wants to pick the next category for us, we'll give her that opportunity. If not, then I will go ahead and pick one. This part of that 20 second delay? I think so, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Greg, have you ever had to deal with any sort of like bottled and bond regulations or um, any experience, I guess, in that? No, I, I actually yeah. don't have a, a tremendous amount of experience along those lines. Uh, it's typically like, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's typically very like, it's a very small subset of distilleries that do it, right? It's not really something that's, it's not very practical. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Looks All like right. Christina's choosing American whiskey for a hundred. Christina, Christina is gonna actually, there we go. All right, so true or false, American bourbon must be made in Kentucky. Bazinga. God, you are first ringing in. Ooh. False. That is correct. Woohoo, sweet. <laughs> All right, Todd for the win. All right. And next category, please. Let's go. Let's go back to Colorado for 300. All right, Colorado for 300. Denver is sometimes called this because of the high altitude. <laughs> Greg, please. What is the Mile High City? That is correct. <laughs> Great, Greg, you were very you were very close, all three of you. Good job. All right, next category, please, Greg. Well, let's finish off Colorado here. We'll do uh, Colorado for 400. Perfect. America the Beautiful was named after this peak in Colorado. Bazinga. Odd, please. <laughs> I love it. Pike's Peak. What? 
What is? Pike's Peak. What is Pike's Peak? That is correct. Oh my goodness. <laughs> what is I'm right? right. Todd was a Learn something new every day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's do uh, what haven't we done? How about um, cocktails for 100? All right. Cocktails for 100. Sugar, water, bitters, and spirit make this cocktail. Bazinga. Todd, please. What is old fashioned? That is correct. Sweet. I'm on a roll. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see. All right. Next category from Todd, please. Let's do same category 200. So cocktails for 200. Yep. This whiskey cocktail. This whiskey cocktail is named after a big city and is typically mixed with sweet vermouth and bitters. Bazinga. <laughs> Todd, you're just hovering right there, aren't you? Uh, I know, I'm like, okay. Todd, Todd again with a, with a fast ring in. What is a Manhattan? That is correct. Excellent. All right. Man. All right. I think Todd might be taking the, the lead here. You didn't know it was going to be like this today, did you, Greg? And I didn't. <laughs> How about... Are you, uh, are you a bartender? I am not. <laughs> You're doing well. Uh, thank you. Uh, it's all those cocktails that uh, Mel has mixed for me, probably. Yeah. Let's stay with uh, cocktails for 300. All right. You're on a roll. Yeah. Cocktails for 300. This whiskey cocktail came from New Orleans and was originally made with cognac. This one's a throwback. It goes it goes a ways back. Throwback. I can give you a hint. It has uh, Peychaud's bitters. <laughs> and originally, it was made with cognac, and it's a New Orleans cocktail. There's even a, a house uh, built on um, Canal Street that's named after it. See if any of our followers have the answer. That's a tough one. It's a bar. It's definitely a bartender, like bar geek question for geek. sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we've got uh, Carolyn Black with the answer is a, what oh. is a Sazerac? Oh. Nice work, Carolyn. Oh, yep. You yeah, she just got herself a $15 gift. I forget. Woohoo. Nice. I'll make Todd, Nate, I'll make you guys a Sazerac next time. That, that sounds good. The, the best way to learn about cocktails is to drink them, in my opinion. I agree. <laughs> so, Carolyn, would you That's like to pick the next uh, category for us? How are your, uh, your whiskeys doing there, guys? Oh, they're doing so well. Good. Delicious. My old elk pork finish is delicious, and it's almost gone. Wow. That's amazing. You saved the even, last two ounces, huh? I did. Even, <laughs> Nate, even if you you're losing, that? you're winning. That's uh, yeah, I agree. Nate, what do you got in your glass? Um, I have an Angel's Envy. Uh, I forget. Um, <laughs> port uh, From Port Barrel. Gotcha. Um, I just finished, uh, my last two bottles of, uh, old elk this week. Well, um, we're going to have to rectify that. Cause, uh, yeah, I, I'd been, I'd been hoarding them and tucked them away. Um, and just couldn't wait any longer. <laughs> You've got an elk head pourer too, don't you? Yep. 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 Well, we can rectify that cause, uh, the reserve is going to be able to do delivery starting tomorrow. So. Beautiful. Let me know where you're at and I'll bring you a bottle. Not All right. Carolyn has chosen category of important dates and she's going big. She says uh, 300. Ooh. Thank you, Carolyn. All right. Whiskey Dudes with Attitudes founded their whiskey club. <laughs> <laughs> Bazinga. <laughs> All right, Todd. What is the answer, please? Two, what is 2018? That is correct. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad you got that right. <laughs> I, better know, I better know that. 
Well, actually, uh, he didn't get the the whole answer right. Is that does that still count as a correct answer? He just gave two thousand and eighteen. December twenty ninth, two thousand and eighteen. That okay. is very. <laughs> what what time? <laughs> it's probably yeah um, after dinner. Uh, yeah. Uh, how about important dates for a hundred? Somebody needs a okay. T-shirt. In American history, prohibition began in this year. Can't believe I don't know this. Bazinga. Todd, please. 1920. Ooh, so close. What is 1920? Very close. Dang it. <laughs> Nate, what's ringing? What is 1929? Oh, you guys are so close. <laughs> deduct one and deduct 10. Dang it. <laughs> Greg. <laughs> we'll blame it on the whiskey. <laughs> if you get minus one, Nathan, how many do you have? <laughs> Depends which one I'm minusing one from. God. Nobody really knew this was going to be a math class. <laughs> Yeah, nobody's All right, so I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna <clears throat> join. Uh, in American history, prohibition began in this year. What is 1919? Oh, you're forgiven, guys. It's okay. It's so close. Just, Mental note. I'm gonna give you a history lesson when you guys come in next for cocktails. Okay. Who wants to remember that date anyway? Right. <laughs> okay. 2020. I should have, you know what? I should have given you a clue and said, you know, what, a hundred and something years later, 2020. We're now yeah. in a not 1920. <laughs> Chris Hayes with 1919. Right on. Nice job. Okay. Chris. So I'm going to pick the next Ooh, category uh, whiskey miscellaneous for a hundred. This type of glass was, des was designed in Scotland for drinking whiskey. Bazinga. Oh. God, please. What is a uh, Glen Karen? That is correct. Mm. All right. Not going to hold all uh, Glen Karen here. Matter of fact. Uh -huh. Nice. All right. How all about right. let's close out cocktails for 400, please? All right. You can add these to your glass of bourbon to chill, but they won't dilute your whiskey. Bazinga. Todd, again, please. What, sleeping. what are whiskey stones? Well, we will accept that answer, yes. Okay. All right, cool. Ooh, I, think, uh, I think we might have said whiskey, whiskey rocks, rocks, but okay. yeah. whiskey stones, same, right. same difference. Appreciate awesome, it. all right. Appreciate that. I don't, I don't, I don't use those. Obviously, <laughs> yeah. I don't know what those are. All right, let's see here. How about, um, let's do American whiskey two hundred. All right, so American whiskey for two hundred. <laughs> whiskey that has been aged for a minimum of two years can be called. <laughs> All right, Greg, please. Oh. <laughs> What is, straight, what is straight whiskey? That is correct. Oh, he was straight yeah. early. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sorry, Greg, sorry I didn't follow the rules. <laughs> uh, let's go. Uh, let's go American whiskey 300. All right. American whiskey for 300. <laughs> uh oh. Uh, like the, the daily, daily double? double? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think so. <laughs> I love it. Okay. So the minimum proof at which a whiskey can be bottled is this. Oh, man. Greg, with the answer, please. <clears throat> what is 80 proof? Ding, ding, ding. Good job. Very nice. We're getting some good answers, too, from our, uh, from our audience. All right. Next category for you, Greg, please. Well, let's go uh, American whiskey for 400. Old Elk Bourbon's mash bill is this. Uh, <laughs> I think Greg was playing nice there. And, uh, <laughs> I know part of it. 
uh, Greg, please answer. Why don't we leave this one for the uh, the, the participants? For the uh, yeah. So putting this out to our uh, our audience, our Old Elk blend of straight bourbon, uh, the mash bill it breaks down into these three grain percentages. I know the malted barley. <laughs> Christina Stover with what is 51% corn. That is correct. Todd, do you want to fill in on the barley? 24% barley. Malted oh, barley. 34% barley. 34. Mm. 34. Even better. Even better. <laughs> That's right. And Greg, how much, of, how much so of rye? Uh, you know. It's 15% rye. Great. No pressure, Greg, Nate says. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, we have a very unique mash bill of 51% corn, 34% barley, and 15% rye. Um, if you add those all up, it'll give you 100% of our mash bill. Um, and so basically, we've got minimum of the corn, about as high as we can possibly go with the barley, with about four times the amount, and then a good healthy dose of uh, of, of rye, which um, Greg is, you know, new would be the most important balancing element there. So we're going to cheers to that real quick because it's delicious whiskey. Cheers. I'm there. There you go. Yeah. There's old up right there. All right, Greg, for the next category, please. Uh, let's see here. Let's do uh, important dates for 400. Greg Metz joined Old Elk as their full-time distiller in this year. <laughs> I just read some of the comments. Uh, Christina Stover says 100% awesome about the match. <laughs> <laughs> Do it again, Nate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, name of the answer. What is 2017? That would be right. Ah. Uh, Ooh, we got some new comments here. Nope. Carolyn says 2014. That is incorrect. Christina says 2018. That is incorrect. So we snapped up Greg in 2016. Ooh. I love that Greg was being um, just polite and not answering that one at all because he was like... <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I have to make a small correction there. Me too. Uh, the full time, the full time, full time employment really started in uh, March of 2017. Oh, that's what really matters. Whiskey is, is correct. So I, I was a consultant from uh, June of 2016 to March of 2017. Oh, so then he's just a contractor at that point. Nice job, Nate. You got it. You taught me something new. <laughs> All right. So, Nate, you uh, let's make sure that Nate gets those points, please. And then, Nate, with a category pick and question. Uh, whiskey miscellaneous for 400. This process is used to remove residue and whiskey that is pulled to between negative 10 degrees Celsius and four degrees Celsius. Greg, what's the answer, please? What is chill filtration? And that is- Pretty sure he's right. Correct. <laughs> There's your science lesson for the day, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So our last but not final question, whiskey miscellaneous for 300. This instrument is used to determine the specific gravity of a fluid. Bazinga. Nice. Todd, please. What is a hydrometer? That is correct. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, I think we have a final question, but I'm not sure what is our what's our score right now, guys. Oop. Oh, 
Uh oh. It's gonna take a second here to tally up our our scores. Shane and Christina, you guys have been uh, crushing it with the answers. I'm gonna have Todd to Todd negative eighteen hundred here. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I feel like, um, Nate, you probably were, like, ringing in, but I just didn't hear you quite as loud. So. Yeah, I didn't I, I didn't realize that until later. Plus, yeah. you, plus, for... plus, you didn't have the answer. <laughs> oh, that's not true. <laughs> we'll go Whatever you got to tell yourself to justify <laughs> those fake points, Todd. I'm going to tell myself about 1,800 <laughs> times. <laughs> Let's see if we got a tally here. Okay, so we've got, yep, yeah, Todd with 1,800, Greg with 1,400, and Nate with 400. So our, our uh, final question will be worth uh, 800 points. Wow. City in Colorado claims to have been invented the cheeseburger. Bazinga. <laughs> Who got it? I, th I think you got it, Todd. Me? Denver. Yeah. What is Denver? What is Denver? That is correct. Ding, ding, ding. All right. All right. Hey. History lesson. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, uh, Todd, that means that you now have ultimate bragging rights uh, because you have you uh, beat Greg and you also beat Nate. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. <laughs> <laughs> I just drank my sorrows. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Me too. Uh, we've got some great. You're not first, you're last. Comments today too. Yeah. <laughs> Christina, she says, uh, "Wish Greg a early happy birthday. Happy, happy almost birthday." Yeah, it's coming yeah, soon. Happy birthday! The awesome. almost twenty-first birthday. You're. Oh, I would. That would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> That's a good question. I'm yeah. not. I guess, I'm not going to guess how old you are. I just know that you're you're the the master of all things whiskey, which is good enough for me. Agreed. Well, I'm not bashful. I'll be 65 in April. April in, well, next week, yeah. Big wow. six five. Nice. Well, cheers to your yeah. birthday, sir. Yeah. Thank cheers. you. Yeah. Indeed. Cheers, Greg. Cheers. So for all of you who are following along and commenting, um, we'll go through and we'll private message you to get your addresses and send you the prizes. Um, we're also gonna hang out for a few minutes here um, and just kind of get to get to know Todd, Nate, and Greg a little bit more. I know that um, you know part of this is to bring sort of Greg and his knowledge and experience um, to a platform where we can, you know, ask questions and just get to know what he's done better. So, um, and, and Nate and Todd have a, their whiskey club, uh, whiskey dudes with an attitude. So I'm sure that they've got some things that they want to ask him. Yeah. yeah, yeah I, I was kind of curious, um, why, um, maybe you could let everybody know me as well. Um, since it was one of our questions, um, why such a high, malted barley content uh yeah actually uh when i met uh old elk almost seven years ago now uh, uh they they came to me while i was still master distiller at the lawrenceburg distillery and they they uh, wanted me to craft and produce a custom mash bill for them and the only two terms they gave me to work with is they wanted the product to be smooth and easy and literally that was the end of the meeting and uh, it was also uh, the first opportunity in my career to actually craft a mash bill from the ground up unrestricted and uh, you know at that point I was what 30 37 years in on my career so uh, you know through my experience I knew uh, to get smooth and easy that I had to get the malted barley content uh, way up in the mash bill but also in the back of my mind I knew that I wanted uh, some rye in that back mash bill for a, a hint of spice uh, throughout my whole career all the mash bills that I produced had always had some degree of uh, and rye in them for different levels of spice so really the uh, the, the mash bill was really sort of uh, 
created on uh, reverse math. I, I took the corn content in the bourbon mash bill down to the minimum, which is 51%. And I factored in the 15% rye, which is really the minimum amount of rye that you can put in a mash bill and still have that spice characteristic carry over into the distillate. And that uh, left me the room for 34% malted barley. Uh, when I, when I said that that was my first opportunity to craft something from the ground up unrestricted, uh, just as a matter of reference, corn, uh, is the most abundant cereal grain and it's by far the cheapest. And it also has the highest starch content. So you get the most alcohol per bushel, uh, out of corn, uh, rye, uh, and corn runs uh, in the neighborhood of four, four to five dollars a bushel. Rye runs about eight dollars a bushel, but the starch content is uh, considerably lower. So you get you're paying more for the rye, and you're getting less alcohol per bushel because of the starch content. And then when you go to the malted barley, uh, malted barley runs in the neighborhood of twenty four dollars a bushel, mm. and again the starch content in that grain is actually uh, lower than corn so you're, you're you know you're you're paying the piper twice on that one you're, you're paying a high a high cost and you're getting less alcohol so uh you know and throughout my whole career i was primarily uh at the commercial level and uh, every year uh, when we did budgets you know you know companies wanted us to make the same world-class products but they wanted us to make them cheaper and the, easy, the easiest way to do that is to reduce the malted barley content in your mash bills. So uh, the unrestricted uh, was uh, something that was really quite special, and it was Kurt and Nancy Richardson that allowed me to do that. Nice. Hey, I got a question for you. Um, I went to uh, uh, a 5280 Whiskey Society event uh, down in Denver a while back. Um, uh, that focus specifically on um, uh, American whiskey, and um, you know there was a lot of uh, not not necessarily debate, but just a lot of good conversation over um, legislation and and uh, um, around kind of um, kind of a corner blocking or uh, you know setting up you know American whiskey as a as a cornerstone in the in the whole marketplace. Um, you know, what are, your, what are your thoughts on, on establishing that foundation for, um, distillers around, around the uh, country? Well, I think that, I think that would be, uh, you know, something that would be not, uh, quite special. It's, uh, you know, we're in the States are making, uh, you know, fabulous whiskeys. The craft arena has, uh, really, uh, through the craft arena and the enthusiasts, the bourbon and whiskey enthusiasts, uh, you know, everybody uh, has really elevated uh, the knowledge of, of the distilling business and, uh, you know, creating an American whiskey or, or, you know, taking that to a higher level, I think would be really mm -hmm. cool. So uh, I uh, really prefer, I, well, I wouldn't say prefer, I don't, I certainly don't discriminate, but my favorite is rye. Mm -hmm. Really, really mm -hmm. love rye. Um, I kind of have a two-part question: Is um, what do you like about rye, Greg? What's what? What are your favorite aspects of rye? Why do you like rye? And then, what are the big difference and differences as far as distilling between producing a rye and producing uh, a bourbon? You know, like an old elk blended bourbon. Let's say. Well, rye. Uh Rye is, is a category of its own. Obviously, it's not a bourbon. It's, it's a rye whiskey. And it's, it's most notable for its spice characteristic. Rye provides uh, a very nice uh, spicy characteristic in the distillate. Uh, you know, everybody's palate's different. Everybody's century's a little different. But for me, I, I would attribute it to like a clove, uh, clove spice. But what makes the the rye whiskey that I've produced uh, over my career uh, unique and different is that it's a super high rye <clears throat> mash bill. Mash bill that I produced in Lawrenceburg was 95% rye and 5% malt. So 
There was no corn in it. Uh, super high rye content. And it's a really uh, extremely difficult mash bill to make and have the quality of the product come out uh, the way you want it. So for me, uh, because it has always been such a challenge to, to mash that, that mash bill and, and have it come out right, it's, it's always been near and dear to my heart uh, from, from the aspects that it's a, a, a big challenge to get it to come out right. Um, one thing about rye is it has a, a real severe propensity to foam when you're fermenting it. <clears throat> and normally when you ferment, you count on the CO2 gas, which is a byproduct of fermentation, to blanket your fermenter and keep oxygen out of it. But when you have a foaming fermenter, it actually starts inducing oxygen into the fermentation, which oxidizes the uh, uh, the congeners as they're being developed by the yeast and it, it actually can turn them into quality defects. So if you get, if you get foamy, you generally led yourself to getting high aldehydes or high ethyl acetates in your, in your uh, distillate. And, you know, a, a small degree of those is wanted as part of your congener profile. But uh, with those high rye mash bills, the, they, they have a real pr propensity to overproduce them, which actually ruins the product. <laughs> I got a quick question for you, hopefully. Uh, obviously, Master Distiller comes with um, a lot of success over, over time. Um, can you tell a story about uh, a time or a, a, a recipe that didn't go so well? Uh, something <laughs> that just you had high hopes for that just crashed and burned? Yeah, we, uh, I, I did uh, a, a barley whiskey, a barley bourbon. Uh, it, it was a limit, limited run. And uh, I don't know, it just, it just, it fell flat. It, it just, the white distillate was kind of unsensational. And, and even uh, after it aged, uh, at least the last time I got to see it, why it was still, it was still just not special. Not good. <laughs> you know, it, 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 from a quality perspective, it was fine, but it just, it just, huh. it wasn't anything about it that just stood out as, you know, being, you know, something that I would want to promote. Yeah. So I have one, one last, one last maybe question. So I don't know if maybe before we went live or whatever, I had mentioned that, um, I had saved this port finish old elk, which was sensational, uh, to finish it off during uh, during oh. this podcast, and uh, it's fantastic. Um, I don't know if you would like to talk about it. Uh, it it was great. This is absolutely one of my favorites. Yeah, I mean, it was one of our uh, that was really our first venture into uh, port or sherry cast finishing. Uh, Kate Douglas uh, really was uh, a leader of that project. Uh, we both uh, talked about doing it in sherry or port, and we both agreed that we thought port would be the way to go. So uh, you know, Kate took the lead and uh, procured a couple uh, port barrels and then aged it for three or four months. And it's it's special. It really uh, adds, adds to the uh, really deep, rich color, and it adds that fruity nuttiness to it. It was, it was quite nice. It, it actually... I hate to say it, it turned out better than I expected. <laughs> it was, it was, it was, it was special. It, it, it's really, really good. Yeah, but uh, again, Kate Douglas Agreed. really led led the charge on that one, and uh, she should get all the credit. <laughs> <laughs> and Kate is just so, in case there's some some maybe new followers or maybe some new people to Old Elk. Yeah, so Kate Kate Douglas is our head distiller out in Fort Collins, Colorado. So. Uh, she she's responsible for all, all the distilling operations out there at the craft distillery. And uh, actually she's also responsible for the dry town gin recipe that we have. So uh, just a young, smart, uh, passionate person about the business and uh, super talented. Very nice. Mel made, Mel made a gin and cucumber cocktail 
uh, forest at that distiller's dinner that was just out of this world. Yeah, it was killer. So, yeah, it was great. <laughs> Mel's a marvel. She's she's amazing. Oh, I agree. Got a question here from yeah. Christina. Uh, uh, she asks, I just got a, uh, I, I don't know, can everybody see this? Yep, yep. Oh, okay. All right. I just got I just got my uh, magazine yesterday actually, and I I saw the headline, but I haven't read that article yet. Bourbon uh, secondary market. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's. I wish I uh, I wish I had read the article already. I, I don't know much about it, but you know, people that are profiting, I don't know. It, it's. I, it's, I gotta, it's sad. I, it's uh, I don't know. I, I wish I, I, I wish I could answer better because I haven't. I just haven't read the article yet to know what what it's all about. Yeah, um, I, I haven't read it either. But um, I just talked with uh, some buddies of mine uh, from college who live uh, in Georgia and North Carolina, and uh, and so many good bourbons that. Uh, you know, you used to be able to find uh, just kind of at any store you can't find anymore. Um, and it, it it's kind of sad. Um, there, there's a lot of good ones out there that, that you, they're just so hard to find. And when you do find them, they're, they're uh, priced through the roof that um, kind of takes away from the spirit and, and the whole purpose behind what bourbon was our whiskey was originally uh, founded on. So yeah, I mean, I will I will say that uh, you know there's there's some products out there that are like extremely high priced because they're hard to get. But and I I would tell you from a personal perspective that I was sorely disappointed in some of those products. So price price doesn't always mean that you're going to get the best bang for the buck. So, yeah. I, uh, you know, it's, it's all up to the consumer, obviously. But I, I just feel like bourbon was meant to be shared with, shared with friends, not kept mm -hmm. on the shelf and not charged three times the retail. And, and, um, you know, I, I just, I'm not a real fan of, of all the bourbon secondary market, uh, yeah. things. I, I believe that there's always going to be, there's always going to be a supply of good bourbon and whiskey and scotch and, and uh, you know, if you are lucky enough to get one, uh, hopefully uh, at around the price that it was, you know, meant to be distributed at that you can open it and share it. I don't think it's, it should be something that, that makes a profit for the, the people that are, are putting in the blood, sweat and tears uh, during the, the the process, not somebody who uh, you know bought it secondary or, or bought it and sold it secondary. I just, yeah. you know, and I think uh, you know I'm gonna I'm gonna take this opportunity to pat Old Elk on the back because our DNA is to produce world class premium whiskeys. Uh, you know, our, our DNA is to, is to do it different or be different than everybody else out there. And uh, you know we're we're priced uh, moderately. We're in the right now probably in the forty to eighty five dollar range, depending on what product you're looking at. But uh, you know that that's not twelve twelve hundred bucks a bottle like some <laughs> some that are out there. But uh, yeah. so I think you know I think uh, Kurt and Nancy Richard and Richardson uh, have been uh, great owners because they they allow us to bring you know, what I consider high priced uh, mash bills to market and, mm -hmm. and, st and still maintain a, you know, a moderate price for a super, super premium whiskey. So, yeah. Yeah. And I was going to say, I think, I mean, those people who are selling on secondary markets, I mean, ultimately it's a select, you know, percentage, right. And what it does do, hopefully for most of us who never, a twelve hundred dollar bottle of whiskey is push us to seek, you know, craft craft spirits that are being done well and differently and better. 
um, and find those little gems, you know, kind of like what Greg is saying, we're, you know, we're lucky to be in that demographic of a, of a delicious, well-made whiskey that's also still affordable, but there are a lot yeah. of other um, spirits out there too. And it, it, you know, at least I think as you get more into sort of enjoying spirits and cocktails and growing your knowledge base about this, this whole world of, um, you know, distilling and product, it's like you find, you find these niches, right? Where you're like, okay, mm -hmm. like I've had the best, you know, my version of a, my version of the best wheat with these now, like, Ooh, I liked the, the fruitiness of that. Maybe I want to try like a, a rum or something. And then you, you know, you explore. So I like to think that at least pushes us to explore more opportunities in different places and different things, you know, and ultimately like we get to sort of nerd out about this, you know, <laughs> um, and I know that's what your, your club is about too. So um, I think I'd, I'd love to ask you guys a few questions about the ski yeah. if that's cool. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I know that you're, I'm, I'm very much like social media, like what's going on, you know, I like Instagram, I want to post pictures. I know you obviously from like a personal relationship here at the reserve yep. um, and old elk, but I also know you guys do a lot online, like on your Instagram page. Mm -hmm. And then um, you have the society too. So how does that like, how does that work for you guys? Are you still taking members? Is it closed group, public group? Well, um, so 970 Whiskey Society was, um, kind of designed to really be just something that was local to Northern Colorado. Okay. Uh, you know, Greeley, Loveland, Fort Collins, all the way maybe into Cheyenne, Wyoming, across the state line. Um, both um, Nathan and I are 5280 Whiskey Society members up in Denver. And it's it, it was very inspiring to go to, uh, to join and to see how that society worked. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the integrity yeah. and ethics that those guys have. Um, and just how passionate they are about um, spirits. It, it was really inspiring. And there was really nothing up in Northern Colorado like this, you know, like mm -hmm. 80. So um, I know. think the first time that Todd and I went to a, a 5280 Society thing, we were both so excited. Um, I mean, we could have taken the whole day off and just <laughs> sat outside the building all day waiting for, <laughs> waiting for the event. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, you know, piggyback on that, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, they they do it right, and um, yeah, we we recognize that, um, you know, the the just kind of the the camaraderie with uh, you know people from all over, uh, you know, the Denver metro area, and shoot, the last time I was there, um, I sat next to a guy that drove down from Vail, um, oh. so. Um, I mean, it's just, it just goes to show you like, you know, people, um, you know, when, when, when you put together a good product as Old Elk is doing and, and, uh, um, you know, many others out there that, um, you know, you bring, you bring people together and that's a good thing. And that's what we kind of wanted to do, uh, with 970. Yeah. We're just trying to spread some whiskey fellowship and spread the, spread the word, you know, like, like there's a lot of people out there that, that just, um, you know, they're, you know, they're just apprehensive. Mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're just really apprehensive. Colorado is such a craft beer state. Yep. And, um, you know, after really getting into bourbons and whiskeys and, and, and rise, um, you know, it's amazing how many people really come out of the woodwork showing interest. And there was just nowhere to go up here in Northern Colorado. There, there wasn't a gathering place or any events or anything like that. So, um, you know, with whiskey dudes, um, it was, uh, quite honestly, uh, it was both of our wives saying, you know, you guys can do something so we don't have to hear about it anymore. <laughs> if you're going to spend this money on this alcohol. Yeah. Yeah. So you yeah. Do something oh, they were just tired of that. Yeah. Yeah. You should share this with other people. Yeah. <laughs> So, <laughs> well, I mean, that is, that is, you know, it is, I think like, that's really valuable to remember. And I think it's cool that you guys are, are doing that and recognize that and created something because, um, you know, it, it really is more fun when you can share, uh, you know, what you're excited about. And yeah. when it's whiskey, it's even more important to share it because it wouldn't be mm -hmm. as much fun if you were just sitting 
drink. I, I mean, we're learning that, right? It's not as much fun to sit at home and drink by yourself, <laughs> yeah. no matter how good it is. Um, no when you other, so. It's pretty amazing um, what happens when you <laughs> sit down with some people, whether it's in person, whether it's virtual like this, uh, the, you know, this is obviously new to us. Um, you know, the friendships and the camaraderie and just the relationships that you build um, just through, you know, it, it's really yeah. cool. It's really cool. Well, we it. appreciate you guys being um, open to doing this with us today. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, this is the second one. So hopefully I think we got yeah. some people following along and it was, it was cool to, you know, it was a lot of fun. each other and yeah. little toads together. <laughs> Nate, you were going to say something. Sorry. Oh, I was just piggyback on what Todd was saying. Um, yeah, I mean, um, at our first 970 event, I met um, two guys uh, that actually lived in my live in my neighborhood that I never knew uh, before. Now, um, and so there you go. Um, you know, a perfect well. example of um, you know how it brings people together, but. Um, and then just wanted to cheers, you know, say thanks to Old Elk and, and the Richardsons and Greg and everybody following. Um, you know, thank you for this. Uh, here's thanks, to you. Um, here's everybody. Cheers. Yeah, thank you, folks. Too. It's, it's a lot of fun, guys. Oh, it's fun. To... Yes, thank you. We also have uh, cheers from uh, Ben Robertson. Cheers from Cinti Greg. Still love the wheat barrel we picked down to two bottles. Time to pick another. <laughs> Illuminati. Oh, I think that's man. a great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah well, you made you made an impression, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, that was a group uh, right around Christmas time that, that bought a single barrel, and they sold the entire single barrel in less than twenty four hours. Wow. Wow. It was, it was incredible. I bet, I bet I signed, I bet I signed over 200 bottles <laughs> in a couple hours. No small feet. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's a great, great group. They're really, really a super knowledgeable and good time and uh, really, really, really good people. So yeah. Nice. Thanks. Cheers to them. Cheers, Cheers to you guys. Indeed. Thank yep. you everyone for watching. All right. Take care. Yeah. We'll thank you all you. Cheers. Yep. Thanks, Thanks. Todd and Nate. Yep. Yeah, thanks, Greg. Thanks, thanks Greg. Mel. Thanks, thanks Mel. Mel. Thank you, guys. Thanks, See you soon. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. 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 We well, got delivery, sure. too. So. Yeah. As, soon as, they'll, as soon as they'll let us. <laughs> Definitely. Bye, everyone. Bye. All right.